Hey and welcome back to another quick tip video. Today we're going to be looking at how to speed up our render times. So a few of you have been asking me how to speed up your renders. Um, so I'm going to share with you a few tips that I use. Um, hopefully it will help speed up your renders. So I've set up a quick scene here in Cycles. I'm also rendering on the CPU just to show you the difference. Um, set the resolution, that's fine. Samples we can leave for now. We'll bump them up later on. And we'll also be changing these values here. But what we want to do is give it a quick render and give us a, like a, a base time to see what we're working with. I'm going to speed this up as well. So we can see like there's six minutes remaining. Um, so I'm just going to cancel that now. What we should do, if you're rendering it on the CPU, make sure your tile size, if we come down to performance, make sure your tile size is quite low. So something like 16 by 16. For now, let's see how that looks. And it should render it a little bit faster. Um, if you are rendering on the CPU, um, then yeah, it's going to take you a lot longer than if you had a GPU, so a graphics card. Um, I do feel your pain because we think we've all been there when we first start learning Blender. It's, it takes 5, 10, 20 minutes to render one frame on the CPU. So it is, it's horrible. So hopefully you've got a computer that um, has a decent graphics card. Uh, it used to be that just NVIDIA graphics card works, um, used to work. But I'm going to set this back to 256 by 256. Um, so if you do have a graphics card that is compatible, then hopefully we can activate this now. So the way we can do that, if we go to File, and then down to User Preferences, and then we're going to go over to System, and then down here we want to change this from None to either CUDA or OpenCL, depending on what you have, and then you can select your graphics card here. So mine's a quite a basic one, it's a GeForce GTX 645, I mean, I'm not too... Uh, I don't really know all the graphics cards, but I assume it's quite basic. So I want to change this now to the GPU. So when we give this a render, and hopefully we'll let this render all the way through, and we can get a base time to see what we're working with, and let's see how much we can uh, shave off our renders. What I'll do as well is, I'll, I'll, if you press number one and two on the keyboard, you can change the slots so you can see the different renders. So I'll also be changing the slots quite often so we can see the improvements and also the times. So we see this one here, it took uh, 2 minutes and 46 seconds, 0.89, so you know, straight away you can see rendering on the GPU is a lot better than the CPU. So switch this to slot 2, and first thing I want to do is change this to the 3D view, and we want to change this, if we select the, the light sources, so I've only got one in here right now, let's go over to the light tab, and down here we want to select the multiple importance. So this will help um, get rid of all the noise, so you don't need to bump up the samples later on. So this will help. So you want to do that on all the lights that you have, make sure they, um, that's checked. That'll help. So let's go to the render, uh, render tab, and let's go down here. Okay, so under light paths, we want to be decreasing some of these values here. And it all depends on the scene that you're working with. Like right now, I don't have any transparent um, materials, so I could bump this down well, down to say three. I could probably get down to zero, but I'm just going to leave three for now. The minimum can be zero. But say you had uh, multiple planes that had transparency on it, you'd want to increase that maximum value. Okay, so same thing with the bounces. We want to uh, decrease the amount of bounces as well. So the maximum, let's say down to maybe six. Minimum zero same with the diffuse so we're going to decrease most of these values and again depending on your scene it will increase it will dramatically change the look of your scene so you want to be careful how much you decrease these values so i'm just going to say uh, glossy four diffuse six transparent uh, transmission four and we're going to be changing some of these other settings in a minute but i want to see how much uh, time that's took off our renders so if we remember the first, if we render this again, the first one was 2 minutes and 46. So let's see how much time this saves. Oh, 
Okay, so 1 minute and 49 seconds. Um, so it's quite a big improvement already. And that's just by changing a few of the values. And if we switch between 1 and 2, we can, there's not much difference between the quality of the render, but the time is, is a great amount. So that there straight away, if you're not changing these uh, the bounces and things like that, you make the light paths values, make sure you change them. Okay, so that's the first little thing we can do to increase it. So let's change the slot number three. So we're going to make some more changes. See how it looks. Okay, so one of the things you want to do is make sure you have the correct uh, tile size. Like I just set it to 256, which is generally a good number. But if we come here to File and then down to User Preferences, and then what we want to do is go to Add-ons and type Auto. And then we want to select this one down here. Let's see what it does. It basically um, it automatically changes the tile size to suit your render. So we see straight away it's changed my tile size. Um, yeah, so there's not much difference between it from 256, but if we see how much time it saves us, probably won't even save us that much because we've set it to near enough the same tile size. Might even save like a second maybe. So then that uh, add-on will set the tile size for you. So it saved one second maybe, which is still it helps, I guess. <laughs> Every little second helps shaving them off. So we switch between, yeah, between them both. There's not much difference apart from the time. So again, another thing we can do is um, turn off reflective and refractive caustics, which basically if you've got glass in your scene, then it will make, um, it will make it look less accurate, less realistic, I guess. So uh, reducing the um, reducing the render times usually gives you less accurate results or less quality. So it's sort of a sacrifice between the both, which you prefer a, a bit longer render time with a bit more accurate results or, you know, so I guess that's down to your preference. But if we switch between slots, um, we can see there's not a great amount of difference in this scene. And again, it is scene dependent. So if your scene's got a lot of glass or a lot of transparency or anything like that, um, these values will need to change. But we can see there's, uh, <laughs> again, another like say 20 seconds maybe difference. And again, look, if we look between the, the slots, the one with caustics had um, more noise in the scene. We got rid of the caustics, we got rid of the noise. So it can help as well get rid of the noise. So look between the two. So looking between the, the render results we've just been going through, there's a great amount of time that we're saving and not much quality that we're losing either. So again, play around with these values to some of that fits. What you can also do is maybe increase the uh, this to two. Also maybe if you're using an, uh, an environment texture like I'm using now, just need to find the, where is it, the settings tab. Um, give me a second, <laughs> I'll find it. Oh, there it is. Yeah, so under the settings, we need to, we can reduce this maximum bounce. So maybe say something like, I don't know, eight. And we can also check the homogeneous value if you want as well. So playing around with these values will give you different results depending on your scene. Obviously for this example, it probably won't be uh, any difference or maybe a few seconds difference if that. But um, depending on what you're working on, you may need to check those values. Another thing we can do is we see we have um, this object, but not all of the geometry is going to be seen by the camera. But Blender is actually taking that into consideration. It's calculating this while it's building the render. So what we can do is just see what's not being seen by the camera and select it and then just delete it. So it'll save us a bit more time. So if we say the last um, the last render was like one minute and 20, one minute 27 seconds or something like that. So let's see how much time we can save by just deleting some of these uh, faces. Again, there's a lot more faces we can delete, so we'll, we would be saving more time since the camera doesn't see it, there's no need for them to be there. But if we render this now and see if it saves us any time. So the last one was one minute and 27 seconds. Let's see how much this one takes. Okay, so there is a, a little bit of a difference. So if you keep deleting the time, uh, keep deleting the the faces that you don't see, then you obviously you'll get some more time saved. 
So if we see the difference between slot 1 and slot 4, alright the camera may have moved position but the quality is not a great amount of, of difference. You can see the difference, there is a little bit less accuracy. Um, so it's up to you again, do you want that sacrifice, do you want less render times? Because it all depends as well how many frames um, you're working on. Right now, I mean, this timeline is only, say, 150 frames. If you're working on something that's a lot longer, then, yeah, you might want to, again, save a lot of time on render time. So, so hopefully some of these tips may help you save, um, save time on your renders. Um, if you've got any other tips that you want to share, throw it down in the comments. It's always great to see when you guys throw some comments. Um, so, yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time.